this time on the Gadget Show Web TV, John's getting all domestic with the Dyson handheld vacuum cleaner. I'll bring you the latest gadget news, and Otis runs down our top five iPhone games. <laughs> yes, I love this game. Welcome to Web TV. Now, you might think it's a bit late for spring cleaning, but that hasn't stopped John from getting down and dirty with the new handheld vac from Dyson. Now, Dyson managed to do something pretty amazing back in 1993 when they launched their groundbreaking DC01 vacuum cleaner. They managed to make vacuum cleaning interesting for the first time. More recently, though, they've decided to extend that appeal into a rather more niche area of the vacuum cleaning market, the handheld battery-operated cleaner. And this is their latest attempt, the DC31. I must admit, I've never been too convinced by battery-operated vacuum cleaners. I can see the appeal, you know, when you spill a few crumbs of cereal onto the kitchen floor, you don't have to rush to the cupboard, take out the big vacuum cleaner, plug it in at the mains, and scoop up the mess. Instead, you can reach for the lighter and much more convenient cleaner and scoop it up that way. But I've never found them, in the past anyway, to be that effective, even in this limited role. The DC31 aims to improve things, and its most important innovation is Dyson's new digital motor. Now, instead of using conventional carbon brushes, which need to stay in physical contact as the polarity in the motor has changed to achieve the twisting effect, this motor uses powerful magnetism. There are neodymium magnets, no less, and the polarity is changed by a microprocessor to achieve the torque. It's a much more efficient process. It means the motor can have a better power-to-weight ratio and can use less energy, and it can spin at speeds of up to 104,000 RPM. There's also a lithium-powered battery rather than the usual nickel-metal hydride one, so the motor doesn't lose power and speed as the battery reaches the end of its charge. And there's Dyson's usual cyclonic separation technique Technology, which basically means the air is rotated very, 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 very fast, and the dust and debris is thrown out and collects at the bottom of this bin here. And it seems to cope well with picking up dust and crumbs off a hard floor, but let's see how well it copes with another typical handheld vacuuming task, the car. This is clearly a more challenging task. There's uh, grit and stuff actually embedded in the carpet, and the actual particles here are rather larger to pick up. But in spite of that, it's actually doing quite a reasonable job. There's also the option to boost the power. There's this 65-watt switch at the back. Press that in, it lights up, and uh, it does it does improve the pickup very slightly. Unfortunately, it has the negative effect of reducing the amount of vacuuming you can get on a single charge from 10 minutes down to 6 minutes, which is really very short in relation to the amount of time it takes to uh, do something like vacuum out a car. There's a couple of attachments available. There's the basic nozzle here, which you can easily click off and put on this uh, brush which also retracts into a sort of, uh, I don't know, I guess a sort of upholstery nozzle. Could be handy in a car. When you're reaching the end of the charge, the light here flashes, so you're not suddenly left without power. To get rid of the dust, you simply press on that lever, the bottom of the bin falls open, the dust falls out. I'm still not entirely convinced of the merits of battery-powered vacuum cleaners, in particular the fact that you can't be vacuuming for too long before the batteries run out, but the DC31 is the best of its kind I've tried by a significant margin. And Dyson do seem to have managed the same trick with this as they have with their bigger vacuum cleaners and managed to make using them fun, which is quite an achievement. Right, news time now, and first up, Facebook have launched a slimmed down version of their site, and they're calling it Facebook Lite. The streamlined version of Facebook doesn't include any of the games, applications, or groups that the main regular site does, allowing for a much simpler user interface. The site is very simple to use and understand, so should appeal to those who are new to social networking or prefer Twitter, as it focuses mainly on status updates with picture and video sharing facilities. 
Facebook Lite is similar to the Facebook you get on your mobile phone and it's much faster than the standard application due to the reduced number of features. Facebook have acknowledged that it is still a work in progress but are asking for feedback to help refine the site. You can check it out for yourself at lite.facebook.com. Next, Motorola have unveiled their first Android handset, the Motorola Dext. The Dext combines text messages, emails, news feeds and social network updates in a very organised way through the use of widgets. The Dext has a capacitive touchscreen, a full QWERTY keyboard, a 5 megapixel camera, 3G Wi-Fi, GPS and an expandable micro SD slot. And as it's run on the Android operating system, you can access apps through the Android market. Other features include the ability to upload pictures to several different websites including Facebook and Picasa. There's a backup system so you can retrieve lost data and if you lose your Dext handset you can track it using the built-in GPS and then remotely wipe it clean. The handset should be with us by Christmas exclusively on the Orange Network but there's no word yet on how much it's going to cost. There are so many games out there for the iPhone and iPod Touch that it can be difficult to decide which ones to have a go on. Well, Otis has been fighting his way through them to bring you Web TV's Top 5. Now we all know the iPhone has thousands of apps and it seems as though the games are proving to be the most popular. But with 6,000 game applications to choose from, it can be difficult deciding which ones are good, which ones are bad. So I figured it was about time I gave you another top five iPhone apps, but this time games. Yes! <laughs> In at number five, we've got Ragdoll Blaster. Now, this game is very simple. It involves hitting a target with a ragdoll that you shoot from a cannon. The speed and direction of your ragdoll is determined by where you touch on the screen. Now, sometimes you may have to blast through obstacles to get to your target, like I have here. Or sometimes the target is moving. See, it's a question of timing. At four is Pinball Dreams. Now, you may remember this. It's an Atari game from the 90s. You've got a choice of four different pinball games. The ball moves incredibly realistically, and the flippers are also very, very responsive. You can also tilt the pinball game by shaking your iPhone. At number three is Slugger, which is a baseball game. Now, you don't even have to like or understand the rules of baseball to enjoy this game. Essentially, what you have to do is knock out as many home runs as you can. You tilt your iPhone to get the sweet spot, as it were, where your bat will hit the ball as it's pitched to you, and then you tap the screen to swing your bat. You can program your pitcher to chuck the ball at you in any number of ways. Also, you can play online. So if it's your thing, you can get your ass whooped by Japanese players, American players, Croatian players. Endless fun. At number two is Space Dead Beef. It's a highly addictive game. It's quite short-lived though, and it's very, very simple. You get the impression that it might be just at the demo phase at the moment. You have a ship that only moves up and down and you have to shoot the enemy. You have a choice of weapons. You can either send a pulse their way, which you can increase in strength by holding your finger on the screen for longer, or you can send multiple missiles that way. You touch on your target and the missiles actually track and destroy the opposition. It's a very addictive game. The graphics are beautiful. It's great. At number one is Rolando 2, which is a sequel to Rolando, which itself proved that games for the iPhone and the iPod Touch could compete in the same arena as games for the PSP and the DSi. Gameplay is exactly as it was for the original. You tap on one of your roly-poly friends or drag a box across a number of them to control them all by tilting. You can make them jump by swiping your finger up across the screen. The graphics are a bit more filled out than they were on the original. And at 5.99, the playability on the game and how addictive the play is and what you can do within the universe of the game makes it a bargain. Well, that's it for this week, but remember you can Twitter us to let us know what you think of our top five. Do you agree or did we get it all wrong? You can also join our fan page on Facebook and keep an eye on our website for exclusive video content throughout the week. On the next Web TV, we'll be looking at a 3D camera, so make sure you don't miss that. See you next time.